Yo, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I have been asked several times about uh, what types of mods I use on my Minecraft. Since I'm mostly doing creative design these days, especially, I have a lot of extra mods that are added on. Um, a lot of them are quality of life, and then a lot of them are performance enhancers. So I figured I'd just make a quick video, or try to make a quick video, on what mods I use in Minecraft. Before we get started, there will be links down in the video description for all the mods that I'm going to describe here so that you can go ahead and get them for yourself. Number one is MultiMC. So this is a launcher for Minecraft. MultiMC allows you to have multiple instances. So for example, when a new version comes out, um, but you're not ready to update because maybe the servers you play on haven't updated uh, or you want to wait for those mods, it's really nice because you can go back and forth between the two versions. Um, you can see here, you can also just easily load up snapshots without affecting your current setup or having to unload your mods folder or worried about accidentally breaking your saves. So you can copy over your saves to new instances and what it does is it creates these folders for each individual instance. So everything that you have in those folders will be unique to there. So if you want to, you know, change servers, again, change saves, mods, all that, it's really great. So this is what I use. The next step in this process is going to be the fabric loader. Now, if you're using MultiMC, there is just an easy option to install the fabric loader on your instance, and you don't have to go through that. Otherwise, if you're using normal Minecraft, there is a download on the uh, fabric website that you can get that, and that's what I use to load up these mods. So you have to install fabric in order to be able to use that. Once you run your game with fabric, it will create a mods folder in your Minecraft instance, as we can see here, and then you can just paste these uh, jar files into your mods folder, restart your Minecraft, and Minecraft will load them up. My next recommendation is going to be some performance enhancements. So unfortunately, Minecraft Java in and of itself uh, is not very optimized, and that's just kind of the nature of Java. But luckily, we have some third-party add-ons that will help us increase that optimization. So first one is going to be the Lithium mod. What that's going to do is it's going to help optimize the game's performance as far as how it needs to calculate everything that's happening in the game. And so this is going to help bring down your MSPT. And remember, again, anything over 50 MSPT is when you're going to see lag all the way up to 49 MSPT and you're fine. You probably want to start watching it when you get that high, but you'll be fine. You can see there on the top left of my screen, we're running at, you know, about nine ish right now. And uh, so the base level is probably going to be a little bit higher. I don't really have anything going on. You know, there's just some animals here. There's a pillager tower over there. There's a village down there. There's not much going on. So we're really reducing that baseline down. Next recommendation is going to be the Starlight mod, and what that does is it optimizes the game's light engine. Um, so when you have scenarios like this where you have a bunch of blinking lights or moving light sources and all that. So we can see if I turn on the light level overlay, we have a lot of the um, light levels blinking. And so that can take a lot of rendering on the actual, um, not only the server, but the client side as well. So Starlight, both on uh, client side and server side, will help improve that lighting engine. Next recommendation is going to be to get Iris with Sodium. Now, what Sodium is going to do is, once again, it's going to be a performance enhancer for your client side. So to help you get better FPS when you're looking around. So if you're struggling with FPS issues, definitely look into getting that. Um, and then what Iris does is actually helps us take away all our FPS <laughs> by turning on shaders. I use the complementary shaders, as you can see right down there on the bottom there. And what that does is it adds in, you know, the dynamic lighting and the shadows and the, the different glows to the light sources. So as you can see, my FPS is kind of struggling a little bit with shaders. Unfortunately, doing recording and shaders at the same time doesn't work out that well on my personal rig. Um, so you do need to have a decent PC in order to be able to use shaders. But there are versions of shaders that are a lot less heavy on the PC and do a lot less rendering. Um, so they don't add in the same kind of effect with the shadows. And you can see we've got really nice high quality shadows for what's a really derpy looking piece of grass. Um, you can just enhance the game a little bit with shaders. Next up is going to be the Massa Mods. I freaking love Massa Mods. Um, down in the video description, there are going to be links to the official releases of the Massa Mods and then also a community port for 119. I've said this in another video. Uh, Massa needs some time to update the code base properly in this round. Um, so we're going to give them that time by using these community ports until they're ready. But uh, once they are ready, these are lifesavers. First off, we're going to start with mini HUD. So I'm going to open my configuration menu with HC and we can see all the information that I have. So I can bring up the mini HUD renderer and we can see up in the top left there, I have a really condensed version of the F3 screen. So I can't play like this. I just, I, if you play like this, you're a special kind of person. 
I can't do it. So this is just info lines about what's going on in the game. So I prefer to use things like, you know, what direction I'm facing, my current position, um, the client light, the server light, the entity count, those kinds of things. And you can also see down here, uh, we have the light level overlay. So this shows the light level of those. And we can see everything that is safely lit is in green. Everything that is not lit is in red. So that red is spawnable. But then we also see these 15s here. And if I go inside, we see those start to dropping down. So I have both the block light and the skylight enabled so I can see what that is. You can also create shapes with mini HUD. So if you, you know, let's say that you want to build a cylinder, but you're not that good at making circles, we can add a cylinder there. And then, you know what, I want to actually have this be smaller so I can open that up, configure, bring down my radius. And then all it's doing is it's uh, just giving us a nice guide. And then we also have things like the Ken spawn sphere, the Ken despawn sphere, and the despawn sphere. These are really useful. So I'll add in a despawn sphere and turn it on. So I know that when my character is at this position, everything outside of this big red sphere will immediately despawn. So this is so useful for when you're designing a farm and you want to know, you know, at what location you need to AFK or check to see, you know, what spawnable areas do I have around here that I'm not getting anything in my spawning platform, those types of things. Next up is going to be Tweakaroo. This is really great for especially doing content creation, but also has some really nice quality of life stuff in survival. So we can see this cave right here. This probably should be dark, but I have my uh, camera override turned on. And that's really nice for uh, us who are doing content creation, because then if we need to do a build, you know, say it needs to be inside of a farm and we want to show how it's working or show inside of caves, uh, you as the viewer can very clearly see it, whereas if I turn off that gamma override, everything is just what the heck is going on. We also have things like offset block placements, so to be able to place in the corners or place on the face away, and then offset block rotation, so I can rotate it to place that way, or to place that way, or to place that way. You can also, in single player, disable your observers, so if you're building a machine and you realize, oh, I need to have a note block here, but I don't want to set off the machine like that, I can then turn off my observers, and I'm going to grab my note block. I can place it in there and I can spam it and I can, you know, break it and place it and nothing's going to happen there. So this is vital when building machines. Next on the list is going to be Lightmatica. So we can see these blocks here are different colors, but they're not actually there. So if I just exit my creative note clip, I can see I can just fall through those. Those are just ghost blocks. And those will highlight the blocks in different states. So pink means that there's a block there, but it's supposed to be air. Blue means that there's supposed to be that block there. And red means there's supposed to be a block, but there's a different block that's there. And then orange will be a block that's in the wrong state. So it's the right block type, but it's the wrong state. So we can see that piston is facing the wrong direction. This is really useful for two things. So one, if you're in creative and you want to test a different change on your design, but you don't want to alter the original, you can take a schematic and then just paste another copy of it. Or you can use these as your guide in survival. So you've, you've designed something uh, and creative and it's maybe a big build. Maybe it's bigger than this, like the size of a cathedral. And you want to bring it over, but you don't want to have to remember where everything goes. You can just bring the schematic and follow the schematic. Or it's nice for being able to share schematics. So you, you build something and you want your friend to see it, but you know you don't want to give them a whole world download because maybe they, you know, they don't know how to do that or the file's too big. These schematic files are nice and small, so you can share them over Discord or email or whatever you want to do. And then finally would be item scroller. So this is really nice for doing inventory management things. So yeah, I can like throw everything out of an inventory there or even trading with villagers. Uh, excuse me, get back here. So I can like, for example, set a favorite trade and then set a hotkey to perform my favorite trade with them. You can also do great fast crafting with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back into survival and look at this and I can just set a hotkey to build emerald blocks. And now I can very quickly craft all my emerald blocks without having to worry about multiple inventories or throwing things out. It'll handle that for you. So those are the massive mods. I highly recommend you check those out. A lot of great quality of life tools, especially if you're a creative builder, but they also have some nice applications for survival players as well. And I'm not afraid to admit it, I will tell you right now, without the Massa mods, I would not have as many videos as I do on my channel because um, a lot of these quality of life things, especially like schematics and things like that, allow me to get stuff out much quicker than I would with just the vanilla Minecraft tools. Next on the list is going to be the carpet mod. So this is definitely more for your creative worlds, uh, but this has a lot of great tools, things like hopper counters. So you can count what the rates of the incoming items are into your hoppers without having to manually do it. You can use carpets to see what the spawning rules of mobs will be on a particular block. You can use the uh, player spawn command to spawn in bots that can help you out with your testing or can even AFK farms on your carpet servers. 
Another one I really like is the rule for explosions not doing any damage. So if you're testing out a machine and you're not sure if you've got the timings right, um, so I'm going to turn that on there and I'm going to see, okay, let's see, does the TNT fall at the right time? I forgot a repeater, but it doesn't matter because it's not going to blow anything up. You can also log things like the TPS, the MSBT, and the mob cap, so you can just take a quick look at where you are in those things. If you're doing some testing uh, with a farm, you want to see where the mob cap is at, that type of thing. Just a lot of great quality of life tools for when you're doing design work. Next up is going to be the world edit mod. This is really only for creative stuff, uh, but it's really nice because I can just select a position there, and then I'm going to select a position, let's say, over here, and then set stone. And that will immediately fill up with stone. And let's say, oh no, I didn't mean to do that. The best part about world edit, undo. So you can get everything back just with your undo when you accidentally do that. It also includes really nice features like move. So you can move your area selections. You can stack your area or even just copy it and then paste it somewhere else. There are so many more options to use in the world edit mod. I'm not going to go through all of them now. Uh, but this is really great thing to note. This is only for creative. So this doesn't have any tools for your survival world. So if you don't do anything in creative, you don't really need to worry about this one. Next up is going to be the enhanced block entities mod. This is purely going to be for performance um, visually on the client side. So for your FPS, so anything like chests, shulker boxes, hoppers, these are actually block entities. And so they take a little bit more rendering and you can see what happens here. If you look on the right side of the screen, when I open this chest, it, it still kind of looks like it's closed, but it's also open. The reason that is, is because this enhanced block entities is rendering these as just plain blocks to start with. And so your client doesn't have to render these in the same way as it would, you know, say like a villager or um, sheep or wolves or something like that. Next up is going to be the Pissed Order mod by Fallen Breath. So if you want to start getting into slime stone or flying machines, those types of things, this is really nice to have. So now I have a piston that's going to be pushing and pulling things. What you can do is with an empty hand, right click on the piston and it's going to tell you what blocks it's going to push and what order it's going to push them in. So especially if you want to do um, really advanced slime stone things, you need to know what the push order and pull order of those blocks is going to be. And then we could see the same thing of a retract of a sticky piston to see what blocks is going to be pulling back and label those out. This is also really nice for if you're working on something that you're getting really close to push limit. You want to make sure you're not getting over it. You can see here, oh, I'm at 13 blocks. I, I can't retract. So let's say you're working on some big giant slime stone machine uh, like this one from Pixels. And you want to see, you know, what each block is at. So, okay, that can retract because that's 10 blocks. That one can push. It's at 12 blocks. Okay, I can't attach anything else onto here. And then still shows us that push order as well. So we can see which blocks are getting pushed by that. Next up is the sub tick mod by Punchster. This is one that I've only recently been turned on to by a user desktop folder. Um, so this is really great for being able to step through the individual block events in a tick. So if you're starting to get into the really technical stuff and you want to see why something isn't working, um, I can freeze the game here like this and then I can step through each block event. So I can see that piston updates, that one updates, then that one, then that one, then that one. Okay, great. That one updates. Oh, the rest aren't updating because now the redstone dust has been turned off in the sub tick. And last but not least is going to be the Zeros world map and Zeros mini map mods. These are really great for being able to render a map of your world so you can see where you've been, what you've discovered. And then you can also set waypoints. So I can say, okay, there's my base. Over here's a raid farm. Here's a spooter spawner. Uh, there's a panda that I put in a boat. Here's my end portal, those types of things. And then you can also see where your player position is. So if you can say, uh, where did I build that one farm? Oh, it's right here. Okay, I need to head over there and I can mouse over and see my coordinates. And okay, I'm gonna head over that way now. So this is useful for both creative and survival because this here is an example of my hardcore world where you can see exactly where I've explored. And so I could say, wait, which direction was that dark oak forest I saw? Oh, it's down right here. Okay, I need to go down to the west. Before we wrap up, I do want to make a note about the Vanilla Tweaks website. So this has a bunch of resource packs and data packs. So it's not really on a list of mods, but at the same time, there are a lot of great things like some redstone enhancements. So you may see in my video, I have the clean redstone dust lines with the signal strength numbers, things like note blocks having their tuning on the side there. That's really nice. Those are available through the Vanilla Tweaks website, and these will not require a mod loader because these are data packs and resource packs. So you can just add these onto your vanilla Minecraft. So that's why I've, I've included them in the list, but they're not really on a list of mods. 
so that's going to be it for this video. Once again, down in the video description, there will be links to all these mods that I've described here where you can get more information on the mods and get them downloaded for yourself. I hope that helped you out. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a good one. Bye. Wait, was the video short? How long was it? Ugh.